In this section of the course, I want to look at SSL. You've probably heard of it. You may have even implemented it on your website. SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer, and it's the standard security technology for establishing an encrypted link between a web server and a browser. Why is that important? Well, SSL will ensure that all data passed between the web server and a browser is private. So if somebody comes along to your website and your website uses SSL, then any communication from that person's web browser to your server and from your server to their web browser is all encrypted. It's all private. You may also hear about TLS, and this is very, very similar. It stands for Transport Layer Security. It's newer and it's a stronger protocol, but you'll often hear people referring to it as SSL. It's not exactly the same as SSL, but it does do the same thing. Showing this as a diagram, you can see on the left, we've got a computer that is connecting to two different websites. One of them uses a secure SSL connection, the other one does not. The HTTP is the old insecure protocol and data that is sent from the user's computer to the server and from the server back to the computer is sent as text. Anyone that can intercept that stream of information can read the text. So if you're sending things like bank details or credit card details, it is essential that you have HTTPS. With an HTTPS secure connection, when a browser tries to connect to the server, it requests the server's identity. And the server has to identify itself by sending the SSL certificate, including the server's public key. And these can be checked. So if things don't quite match, if the certificate doesn't match what's supposed to be there or something's a little bit dodgy, your web browser will say, hey, this certificate isn't valid for whatever reason. And you know that there is a problem with that site and you shouldn't probably put your credit card details into it. So to summarize then, SSL is important to keep information confidential and private. There is communication two ways between a web browser and a server that holds the website. The communication between them needs to be kept private. You don't want credit card details, usernames and passwords being visible because they're being transmitted as text files. You need to have them encrypted. The encrypted sites, those that use the HTTPS and have the certificate installed will have a secure sign in the address bar of Google Chrome and other web browsers as well are including some sort of indicator there that the website is secure or it's not secure. It's quite possible that you may have the HTTPS loading on your site, but you don't get the green padlock. That will be because you have some insecure content somewhere on your page and that stops it from being 100% secure. We will have a look at that briefly in this section of the course. In this video, I want to look at Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a free certificate authority. That means it can issue SSL certificates and they don't cost you anything. The good thing about Let's Encrypt is that a lot of web hosts are compatible with it. The web host that I recommend in my courses is Stablehost and they are compatible with it. If you want to check, go to your web host and ask them or log into your cPanel and scroll down to the security section down here. And if you've got a Let's Encrypt SSL link, then you will be able to use Let's Encrypt on your sites on that web host. Now, there's a couple of different scenarios here. Firstly, you may have an HTTP site that you want to convert to HTTPS, or you might be installing a new site and you want to install the SSL certificate from scratch at the time you install WordPress. We're going to look at both in this video. So the first option here is let's install a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate on an existing website. Here I've got a demo site that is not secure. This is hosted on Stablehost. Now look what happens if I go to HTTPS and press return. It actually loads as a secure site. Now I haven't installed an SSL certificate on this website, but my host Stablehost has. My host uses something called auto SSL and your web host may do the same thing. So the first thing to do is to check if you put HTTPS colon backslash backslash and then your domain, does it load up as a secure website? If it does, then you've already got the certificate there. The only thing you need to do is to make sure that if somebody tries to go to the insecure site, it's automatically redirected to the secure site. And we can do that by editing the HT access file for this website. So I'm going to load that up in FileZilla. 
And here I have the HD access file open, ready for editing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert two lines of code. Now the two lines of code that I'm going to insert, I've included as a resource for this lecture. So you can download it and you'll have that those two lines of code. What you want to do is move your mouse to the end of this line, rewrite engine on, and just add a couple of spaces in there. And we're going to paste the two lines of code in between. So I'm going to just paste those and then I'm going to save. Those changes will now be saved to my server. And if I go back to my website and refresh the insecure site, you can see now it's automatically redirecting to the secure site. So that's fixed the problem. If anybody tries to go to any of the pages, you can see down the bottom left now, all of the URLs are HTTPS. Okay, so people are now going to be using the HTTPS version and there is no way for them to get back to the HTTP because the redirect we've just put into the HT access file. One thing you should do though is go and log into your dashboard and make sure you can get into your dashboard okay. Click on over to the settings general screen and scroll down a bit and you should find that the WordPress address and the site address are now both HTTPS as well. So that's what happens if your server is using auto SSL. What if it's not using auto SSL? Let's look at that case now. Here I am back at the test site and I've actually deleted the certificate on my server so that the HTTPS version no longer works. And we're going to assume that this is the case for you. You've got the HTTP version, you don't have the HTTPS version, but you still have the ability to install Let's Encrypt through your web host. So in this situation, you log into your cPanel and go down to security and then click the link Let's Encrypt. This takes you to the Let's Encrypt SSL and it will show you any domains where there are Let's Encrypt certificates installed. The site that we're interested in, this Harlan Limited, it says not installed. Now it has been installed, but I've deleted it so I can show you how to create these manually. It does say reinstall there, but I'm going to ignore that. What I want you to do if you want to install a Let's Encrypt certificate is scroll down the web page to the second section of this page that starts off with the title Issue a New Certificate and in there you'll see a list of all your domains. What you need to do is next to the domain where you want to issue the certificate, which is this one down here, go along and click on Issue. When you click Issue it will come up with some options that if you don't know what you're doing just leave them as they are and click on Issue. You'll get the message hopefully that the SSL certificate is now installed onto the domain Apache is restarting in the background. At this point we have an SSL certificate on our website. If we go back to the website I'm going to refresh the HTTP version and now I'm going to go and try the HTTPS version because we now have a certificate installed. And as you can see now we are getting the padlock and we have HTTPS so that certificate has been installed. However, if I go back to the HTTP version we are allowed to get there. So the final part of this step is to go and insert those two lines of code back into your HT access file and then that would complete the setup for this type of SSL certificate installation. So let's have a look at option two. This is where you install the Let's Encrypt certificate when you install WordPress. Here I am over in cPanel and I want to go down to find Softaculous because I'm going to do the easy install. Click on the WordPress link and then I'm going to click install now. What I need to do is to choose my domain name and I've done that. I'm going to install it onto the same test site which I've previously uninstalled now. And then the setup here, if you try and carry on as normal, it says a trusted SSL certificate was not found. So what we need to do is go back to cPanel and we want to go down to Let's Encrypt, scroll down to where it says Issue a New Certificate and click on the Issue and then Issue the Certificate. Okay, so the certificate has now been issued. I can go back to cPanel and back down to Softaculous. Where are we? All right, down the bottom. Okay. And click on install, select the domain again and this time when we go to try and continue the installation the HTTPS there is accepted. So I would then just go and 
change the settings as necessary, enter my details down here, and then click on the install button. The installation will then proceed as normal. This time it says WordPress successfully installed at, and it's got the HTTPS version. So if we click on that to open it in a new browser, you can see that we have the HTTPS version. If we try to go to the HTTP version, we still get it in this case. So do check to make sure whether the HTTP is still being served. If it is, then go into your HTTP access file and add those two lines of code so that they will automatically be redirected to the HTTPS version. If you upgrade your site from HTTP to HTTPS, there's a good chance you're going to come across a problem called mixed content. And I'm going to show you about that in this video. If you've created your SSL certificate when you install WordPress, this is far less likely to happen. It still can happen, but it's less likely. Let me show you the problem. Here I am over at one of my demo sites and it loads up the HTTPS version, but it's not getting a padlock. And if I click on the little I, it says your connection to this site is not fully secure. Okay, so there are elements on this page that are not fully secure. And be aware that this is a page by page basis. So if I go to another page on the site, that one will be evaluated separately. In this case, this page is fine. It's got the, it's got the certificate lock. Back on my home page, though, we have this problem. There are a couple of things you can do to try and find the issues. One of them is to use the Chrome browser and to go and install an extension called HTTPS Mix Content Locator. Search for it on Google, click to add it to your Chrome, and then when you go to a web page and you get this little eye that says it's not fully secure, have a look at your Chrome extension up here and you can see that there are eight warnings on there. If I click on that, it tells me that I've got passive mixed content and active mixed content. The ones at the top, if I click on the little target, it will highlight it on my web page. You can see that image has just been highlighted there if I click on it. And the next one will be the next image. And the next one would be probably that image down there. And then we have some other problems down here which refer, I think, to Google Fonts. If I have a look at the HTML behind this image, things will become clearer. I'm going to press F12 on my keyboard. This brings up the Chrome developer tools, which we do cover later in this course. And I'm going to click on the little inspector button and bring it over to the image and click on it. And you can see the HTML over here that is in the web page that loads that image. And you can see that the image is being loaded from HTTP colon feedyourmicrobes.com. So it's from this website, but it's trying to load the image through HTTP rather than HTTPS. And the simplest way to fix this is to go and remove the item in the post and then add it again from the image or from the media library. And then that should fix it. What can we do about some of the other items down here? Well, you're going to need to investigate those. These ones don't actually give us all of the information we need, so I actually use a second tool. And I use a second tool not just because sometimes you don't get all the information you need, but because this Chrome extension doesn't always find insecure content. You might get the little eye there, and then this one doesn't say there's any problems. So I use a second tool, and it's this website here, Why No Padlock. You can put your domain or your URL that you're inspecting in there. Click I am not a robot and then click on test page and it will do a scan of that page and tell you any problems. And it's going to finish any second. There we go. Five out of five complete. And then we can scroll down and see where there's any problems. Further down at the bottom here, we've got um, mixed content errors. OK, hard failure, a file with an insecure URL of HTTP colon forward slash forward slash fonts is being loaded. So this is one of those items, one of these hard failures that we saw up there. It's Google fonts and it's being loaded from insecure. That is probably controlled by your theme. So make sure your theme is up to date. Make sure that they are calling the secure versions of the Google fonts, not the insecure versions. And then you can see we've got soft failure and these are those images that would need to be fixed. And that's the quick, the easiest way of doing it. Go in, you will have to check every single page on your site. There are one or two spiders out there that look for insecure content on your sites. I haven't found any that are really, really reliable. One thing you can do as a last resort, if you log in to your dashboard 
Let me close that. And we go down to plugins. There is a plugin that can help solve the problems for you if you're in a rush and you don't want to have to fix everything straight away. Let me scroll down. I actually have it installed. I have it disabled though. It's called SSL Insecure Content Fixer. And if I activate that, and then go down to the SSL Insecure Content Settings. Right, I have it set on content. Everything else stays as it is, save changes. And then if we go back to the home page and look, we should have the padlock there. I'll bring up the Chrome Developer Tools again just to inspect the image. And you can see now over here, that plugin has added the HTTPS to the front of that image. So that is now being served securely over a secure connection. Therefore, we get the padlock. So that's what you can do if you're in a rush and you need to get it done quickly. You can use this plugin. Plugins, I wouldn't use them unless you have to. So ideally, you should go in and you should fix all of that insecure content bit by bit until your site is totally secure so that you don't have to use a plugin. Remember, plugins can have security threats. If, if a security hole is found in one, then it leaves your site vulnerable. So don't use plugins unless you have to, but this one is one that I have used on a number of sites and I haven't had any problems with it. And it does solve the insecure problem on those sites.